My name is Dorothy Kweju. Um, a journalist by profession. No longer in uh, uh, active practice, but still very much in the media. Today, I'm talking to you on a matter of grave, grave concern because the next 10 or so days are critical. They are critical because we shall have reached the deadline for collecting an equivalent of 100 million Kenya shillings that is needed to buy my son, Stephen Bertrand Munyaho's freedom from Shimezi prison in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Steve, as you are already aware, this story has trended for a while, got into a quarrel with a colleague who ironically was also a friend on Saturday, the 9th of April, 2011. The friend took a mail opener from his uh, desk and stabbed Steve in the thigh and in the thumb. This is extremely important in what I'm saying or what I'm going to say because it is that act that prompted Steve to snatch the same weapon from his colleague and stab him. From what I've learned, the office was like a war zone. It was like a war zone because the colleague then took a fire extinguisher and hurled at Steve and it exploded and the room was actually in smoke, you know, I mean. And um, they then parted ways, you know, and um, it is in the public domain that the late walked himself to hospital. And I say this on the authority of the ambassador at that time. There have been several changes since 2011, as you can imagine. But I can never forget that visit when he came. And I am deeply indebted to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that whenever an ambassador visited, they invited me to get an update from him on my son. And I remember him telling me that Mama Steve, Steve never killed Mujahid. Mujahid walked himself to hospital. And Mama Steve, if it were not that that country is not so hot, I don't even think Mujahid would have died. He died because I, I believe it was too hot and so he overbled and died. So for me, Steve is not a murderer. He never went out of his way to murder his friend. And it is on the strength of that, I believe, 
that the preliminary court that had Steve's case awarded him five years jail for manslaughter. The widow of the late immediately appealed the sentence and even though Sharia law gives you three options. You can give the killer of your loved one. You can ask for blood money or you can uh, uh, insist on your right to revenge. Unfortunately, and I don't blame her, I can imagine that her feelings were still raw. The widow chose the extreme route he demanded the execution of Steve. This blood money, there is forgiveness. And there is revenge. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Under Sharia law, the Sharia court that she went to, she had those options. She chose the extreme way. Steve appealed. Immediately the sentence was uh, pronounced. He went ahead to appeal because how did manslaughter suddenly become murder? Hmm? That remains a big question. It remains a big question because the judges who uh, ruled on the first appearance must have had good reasons to award Steve a foreigner, just like Mujahid, a foreigner. He was Yemeni, yeah? a Kenyan and a Yemeni. For the first court to have given, uh, to have awarded uh, uh, Steve um, uh, a manslaughter sentence, you know, of five years, there were reasons. And the reasons were that Steve was stabbed in the thigh. Steve was stabbed in the thumb. Left thigh, left thumb. And those were compelling reasons for the initial court to decide that there was no malice aforethought. And that is very important in law. Yeah, that is extremely important that there has to be malice aforethought for somebody to, have, to be judged as a murderer. So Steve appealed and unfortunately to date the case is yet to be heard. By the way, by the time that case was being heard, Steve would have come back already because just like uh, normally there is, uh, you know, if it's five years, you serve two and a half, you know, it's universal unless there's, uh, there are present reasons to keep you longer. Yeah. And uh, so that is what happened. The execution sentence was handed to Steve in 2014, June, to be precise. From the moment the widow appealed, as we say in, uh, in my language, I tied a rope around my tummy, you know. It is like, you are finished, you know. Yeah, you are finished because what are your options? And the only option which we were waiting for was the appeal. And it has been a while because 2014, we are now in 2024. That is 10 years. Compare with the three years within which the widow got her justice. My first desire when this matter happened was that I go and tender my apology. That was even before the first uh, sentence was meted out. And just mourn, like you mourn, you know? Huh? 
like you mourn because I learned from Steve's friends and even from Steve himself that Mujahid and Steve were friends. Huh? And so you ask yourself, you know, what happened? Steve never had the benefit of a lawyer. Hmm? And Steve could have caused and been allowed to do things that he's not supposed to do. A criminal or uh, an accused person, because you are an accused person, yeah, uh, uh, until the court proves you guilty, has a right to legal, um, yeah, uh, he didn't get that. He never got legal support, yeah. Steve needed an interpreter. He was given an Egyptian interpreter and from his little knowledge of Arabic, having lived there in 15 years, he would see that, no, he's not saying what I'm saying. And he actually begged, Steve begged for a change of interpreter. He was never given that. So that too was a miscarriage of justice. So, in the whole process, you say things, you, you need legal advice, otherwise you might even find yourself incriminating yourself, you know, unconsciously or consciously, but in law, you are not supposed to incriminate yourself, yeah? You have a right to legal defense. We are praying that the long-awaited appeal might be heard and that these issues might be addressed properly. May 15th is when we, the family of Steve, should hand over 150 million Kenya shillings to the uh, uh, Mujahid family, you know. And I can tell you that that money is not there. We have so far managed, and I really do congratulate family, friends, and well-wishers who have so far raised uh, 3.5 million Kenya shillings, yeah, in less than three months. And also I congratulate um, the uh, Kenyan community in Riyadh, that is where our embassy is, because there is already 59,500 Saudi Arabia reals, which is equivalent to 2.1 million Kenya shillings. So if you add the two amounts, they just amount to something like 3.3%, you know? When you look at the actual money, 5 million is not small change, really. But if you compare with what is wanted, you know, we are far far from the target. My appeal is twofold. One, an extension of the elapsed period. Yeah, because it's elapsing by at least another six months. And secondly, further talks to see if the money can be further reduced by the family because that money is unheard of. In fact, many people say, you know, ah, you, you can't manage, you know. But because he, he is our child, he is our son, you know, we are appealing to the generosity of each and every person who hears this story to throw in their lot with us because alone we shall never manage. And that was actually my first reaction. Eh? But my son, the next boy in rank to Steve, was quick to say that, look, one million Kenyans paying only 150 shillings can get out Steve in a day. But it is easier said than done because 
So far, we haven't got those one million Kenyans. But the giving has been generous, you know. And I believe that if the word reached out widely enough, you know, there have been those who have given even 20,000, yeah, even 30, you know. People have given to the best of their ability. And the fundraising continues from the day that we were given a pay deal. Yeah. But the remaining days are just too short to raise that money because if we have raised 3.3% um, uh, uh, in about two and a half months, uh, how are we going to manage the 96? <laughs> it differs because Mwezikona, you see significant drop, you know. End month, you see a heightened activity. He has this appeal, knows that we are in grave danger of losing my son. He's a Kenyan citizen. Can they kindly spare whatever they can to help us bring back Steve to Kenya? He has already been behind bars for more than 13 years. This tragedy happened on the 9th of April 2011. That is more than 13 years. We are now walking the 14th year. And you can imagine the mental torture that as a family we have gone through, and especially the mother, you know? The mother, for me, Steve is my child, is my child, is my child. He'll never be a murderer. For me, Steve is my child. And in as much as he is now 50, this tragedy happened when he was 37, he's still my child. And when he calls and says, Mommy, you know, there's still that emotion of the baby Steve, the toddler Steve, the adolescent Steve, you know, and the adult Steve, you know. Motherhood is for life. I have tried from the word go. I do remember even a time when with my son, because uh, actually I was working with Foreign Affairs and they gave me a letter to take to the embassy of Saudi Arabia that time. I never got a visa. We never got visas until the tickets expired. And you know, normally a ticket is important to show that you will go and come back. It was, um, I think it was, uh, should be some, uh, it's more than six, it's more than six years. But other attempts have happened and they say, we'll try. Um, but other attempts, they have also said, the widow is not ready to see you. She's living there and um, my information is that the boss, the joint boss of the late and Steve looks after them. But I've also heard that, and I don't know, uh, it may be just, but I don't think it is speculation. I understand and I, those close to Steve and his boss think that uh, uh, Mr. Ashmawi loved Steve enough to want this uh, uh, family to accept blood money instead of execution. And he is the one who has been looking after that family because he knew they were needy. After the breadwinner had passed on, they had nowhere else to go. So they are there. I told them, and I even the letter I got explained that she needs to go and see the son. But in the process, I also wanted, and I had actually begged the embassy to accompany me to see the widow. Hmm? Yeah. I actually, it was a dual, dual mission to see my son and to see the widow. But it was always... The widow is not ready to see you. 
my desire is to meet Nadia and tell her my daughter what happened was the work of the devil. Yeah, it was the work of the devil because how do two friends stand on each other with such devastating consequences? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm praying for justice for my son because I seriously believe that something didn't go right. Something went wrong. There was a miscarriage of justice because how did a manslaughter case escalate to a murder case?